Myron Foster, I'm from the city of West Point. Uh, I'm the president on the board, and I'm from the District 8. Hi, my name is Anthony Hall. Uh, I'm the president elect of the Library Association. Uh, I'm from Pastor Stan, and I work for the Pro River County Utility Authority. Chuck Redman, I represent uh, District 6 on the board. Uh, I work for Jackson County Utility Authority, and I'm from the city of Moss Point. KT Newman, wastewater operator, town of Aden. Uh, town of Aden is a relatively small town. We've got approximately 300 connections, 765 customers. We've got five lift stations, approximately five miles of force main with uh, 16 to 17 miles of gravity sewer line. Those gravity sewer lines along with the force main all flow and pump to one centralized lift station and then it's all pumped to the lagoon. You just have one lagoon? Right, one lagoon. It's a two cell facultative lagoon uh, whose effluent is controlled by HCR. All right. um, what, are, what are your limit discharge permit limits? Well, we got a 3045 on BOD. We got a 9135 on TSS. Is it all y'all sample for? Well, no, actually, we, uh, the last permit, we, we sampled it now for, uh, it's got fecal, it's got chlorine. Um, of course, we have the BOD and TSS percent removal. And our newest permit, will have uh, nutrients, total nitrogen, as well as phosphorus, which, which is going to be a unique challenge for a lagoon. What, what is your average flow? <clears throat> average flow, well, actually with the, with the HCR, we, we can kind of control it. So um, on a monthly basis, our permitted flow on a monthly is, is 150, 150,000 gallons per day. But so we, we've calculated over the years, we know how to, how to control it. So we average just under that in terms of our um, MGD flow. So I would say probably close to 0 0.14, 140,000 gallons per day on average in any given month. What do you like most about your job? Well, I, I would have to say the thing that I like most is if if I've got a problem, if I've got a problem at the at the lagoon, or if I've got a problem at a lift station, or even out on the collection system, I can pick up the telephone and, and call DEQ, or I can pick up the phone and call uh, any number of operators across the state of Mississippi. And so, if, with a support team like that, it's, it's really hard to go wrong. So, and, and I would encourage, particularly young operators, I would encourage them to utilize that. So what if they be dislike the most? <clears throat> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's a dislike as much as I would say it's a challenge. And we alluded to it just now. Small towns across the state, you know, like Baden, are starting to receive what's being referred to as these life-changing permits, getting really low BOD numbers and really low ammonia nitrogen numbers and, and having to test for nutrients. And as we just stated, these are things that lagoons didn't have in, didn't have in mind, not capable of meeting. So the question becomes, how do we get from where we are to where our permit says we need to be? And the answer to, to that question is likely to cost a lot of money. Unfortunately, these small towns just don't have it. So that, that's the part of the job that's, that's becoming increasingly more difficult. For small towns in particular, maybe different for a larger town, but for small towns, just having the money to continue to comply with the permit. It's going to be hard. Well, I, number one, I'd like to thank God for blessing me with the, the health and the strength to have been in the business for, for 21 years. Uh, I'd like to thank Mayor Hawthorne and the town of Baden for thinking enough of me to nominate me. Uh, thank uh, the, the other towns that uh, entrusted their wastewater oper operating responsibilities to me. I'd like to thank my family uh, because you know, there have been a lot of vacations that have had to be put on hold and a lot of Sunday dinners that have been interrupted because of my job. And they 
they've been understanding and, and I appreciate that. What this nomination means to me is when I think of the, the wastewater operators across the state of Mississippi, uh, I think that they're second to none, uh, many of which are much more deserving of this type of recognition than I am. So to be listed among them is, uh, is humbling and it's a tremendous honor and I'm very thankful for it. Uh, is there a message you like to tell others in the business? <clears throat> well, I, I would say particularly to, to a younger operator, and, and I'm relatively young myself, I've been in the business for 21 years, but I started when I was 21, and I would say for those that are younger than me, that uh, number one, work hard to uh, not to take any shortcuts, to, to understand that, that you're representing your family and you're representing your community. And you got a lot of big shoes to fill uh, when you consider the operators that have paved the way for us. And, and in that is a tremendous responsibility. And we've got to live up to it. Okay, Katie. Tell me a little bit about your uh, maintenance and uh, the housekeeping uh, program that you have in the Well, what we do is in conjunction with the public work staff here at Vay, I'll check the facility uh, a minimum of once per week, you know, per permit requirements. But I've got, they actually, they've got an operator trainee who's worked under me for some time now who checks it every day. And so he keeps a law and I'll keep a law. And whenever there's an issue, and to the mayor's credit, when, whenever there's an issue, for example, all five of our legislations, if one goes down, we repair it immediately. If um, My name is Justin Comer, operator with the City of Fulton Wastewater Treatment Facility, and I've been here 14 and a half years. Serve 1,765 people. Uh, we've got three lagoons. Our main lagoon is aerated. This, we've got four aerators in that lagoon. Uh, that's the Southwest Lagoon. The West Central Lagoon, we have one Aero 2 aerator in it with blower assist just to help with the smell purposes during the summertime because it's located right next to our city baseball fields. And uh, the South Lagoon is a the little smaller lagoon. It's south of the south of I-22 and it serves uh, uh, our high school, junior high, and grammar school. Uh, and we also have a aerator in it as well, Arrow 2 or Blower Assist, uh, just for smell purposes there. Uh, we've got roughly 75 miles of gravity flow sewer lines and uh, 11 lift stations. <clears throat> The BODs is 65 and 35, and um, we we have no problems hitting those numbers. Uh, just with aeration, uh, <clears throat> let's see, um, it's really really pretty standard. That's 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 really the only thing. Um, the the Southwest Lagoon, of course, has got our biggest industry on it, Mueller Mueller Brass. Um, so during permit renewal and we just finished up permit renewal this month uh, they're gonna start putting nitrogen and ammonia on us mm -hmm. and right now we're just strictly monitoring those uh, they have not set any limitations for that yet what do you like most about your job I like helping the public I, I, I you know it gives me great pleasure uh, and it may sound awkward but when you get that phone call at midnight and you know you've got a pump station that's down or you've got a 10 inch water main that's broke and you go out and you work all night to try to get folks service restored you know I mean it's a a lot of times it's a thankless job but but I enjoy doing my job I mean and it, you're out you're outside every day I love being outside every day uh, you know we may complain about the cold or we may complain about it being 110 degrees, but uh, but I enjoy being outside and you're you're doing something different every day. It's not the same old thing like a you take a factory worker and he goes in and he makes the same piece of furniture every day. 
a thousand times a day. You know, we may go out and work on a pump this morning. Well, that afternoon we may be out on one of those cool bobcat excavators, you know, digging a right away, you know, clearing a right away or, or you know, digging a sewer line up or making a water tap, you know, what have you. That's, I, I, I enjoy that. Okay, so what aspect do you dislike the most? Because <laughs> you build everything up. <laughs> well, of course, working for any municipality, uh, it, it can get a little political, and I, I, I don't really like that. Uh, I, I kind of try to shy away from that, and that's uh, that's why I got to give. That's why I got to give you know my utmost respect to Brian Wood, our utilities manager, my boss. Uh, he kind of shields a lot of that from us, but it's still you know the trickle down effect. So we still get that from time to time. But uh, I have to give him. I have to give him some major respect for doing that, but I, I I really don't like the political aspect of it. So I'm assuming he's the one that nominated you for this position. Uh, I come to find out, it was our mayor, Lynette Weatherford. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay. So what does this nomination mean to you? Uh, it's it's. I was very honored to have this nomination. Uh, I have the utmost respect for the Pollution Control Operators Association and what they mean, what, what the Operators Association means to the operators in the state of Mississippi uh, that are involved with it. And it's, you know, I, I you know, I, it's, it's a great thing to do for the operators of the state of Mississippi for uh, the continuing education, for the, for the schools that you put on, for the services you provide to the operators. And I mean, it's 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 one of the highest honors that I think an operator in the state of Mississippi could receive. What type of training uh, program do you, do you all have to uh, encourage you all to get certified and uh, to keep up your certification? Uh, well, I mean, I like I told you earlier, I've been I've been a certified wastewater operator for fourteen and a half years, and uh, uh, the guy the guy that was over the utilities when I that hired me. He was certified in gas, water, and sewer, and um, you know he 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 talked up the operator association. Dan Pate, he was a uh, you know he he's an operator association member for years. He hired me and and he instilled that in me uh, to to get certified, to learn all you could about it, and to keep that certification up because it'll be beneficial to you on down the road and for years to come, even when I'm no longer employed by the city of Fulton to keep that certification up. I work with the city of Loosedale and I've been with the city about five years. I've been an operator for two and uh, I'm a class three operator. What kind of flow do y'all have? We average about anywhere from 250,000 gallons to 300. We're rated for five, for 0.5 million gallons. What, what is your discharge limits um, per minute? Uh, 0.5 on our uh, flow. Uh, what do you like most about your job, Kevin? Um, the diversity, the challenge, um, cause we, we do everything from install meters to, uh, take care of the plants, maintenance and everything, um, uh, do the operations and, um, we read meters, we do everything. Okay. So what part do you dislike the most? Um, cut off, cut off. Cut people out. That's the hardest thing I do. Hated you. Oh, Kathy, the uh, city clerk nominated me. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there any is is there a message you like to give others in the business? Um. Yeah. The message I like to say is is. Operators that have been in it for a while is your most valuable asset. And I have learned to pick brains as my, anybody I meet and I'll sure I will pick yours as we go through this. 
Uh, that's been my biggest asset in learning is the operator has been in the business for a while. Kevin, yeah, you said you've been in, uh, working here for five years. Mm -hmm. Explain what type of maintenance program and uh, equipment upkeep you have as, you know, as far as maintaining the uh, equipment, not only the list station, but the treatment plant as well and the housekeeping. Okay. Um, we have sheets that we go, or lift stations, we have checklists that we go through and uh, I can show them they standing behind the window. There's a, uh, a whole bank of sheets that we use. We uh, have checklists at our uh, plant that we use to uh, check everything and uh, keep our numbers on. And once I, those are field sheets, I bring them into here and I have programs on the computer with uh, Excel that I enter all my data and then I print it out and put it in my files. How, how, how you, all, you all do your maintenance? I mean, you know when to change the oil or stuff of that nature. You, you have a sheet that does that as yeah. well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, I guess you just said, mentioned that you got your water certified and wastewater certified. What other type of training do you and your personnel do in order to keep up your certification and, and, and so forth to stay on top of uh, what you do in the industry? We take any classes that's available uh, that y'all put on and the uh, rural water puts on any of that that we can come across. We have our 8 and one comes about once every three months and they do a little training on their 8 one one and how to locate and all that. Of course, we have different skills amongst us, the four of us. And the electrician, he teaches us things that we need to know what to look for and as we monitor lift stations and plants and things. We, he teaches us what we need to look for. And um, I haven't found any resources online yet. Uh, what what about your safety and uh, emergency response uh, plan or, or emergency plan? How do you all deal with safety and emergency calls or so forth? Uh, we have an emergency response plan. And, okay. uh, what about safety? How do you all? Uh, Usually when we approach a uh, job or anything, we'll discuss it beforehand. And, uh, usually here in the office, as we preparing for a project or when we're taking something down, we'll discuss the aspects of it, the tools we're going to need, and basically just have a safety meeting. Okay. And you mentioned about your records, how you keep records of your maintenance, and I, I take it that you keep records of your DMRs and all your permitting and everything that you do. That way, if you need to go back to it, you can refer. Yes. What about how, how much input uh, do you have into uh, your budget process. I know every year you probably want to see some things get done. Uh, I guess take it you work with the city and uh, city leaders to try and, and... I have a lot of input. Um, okay. Every year I can make recommendations for my budget. I have a lot of control over my budget. Uh, um, the city has been real good about giving me anything that I ask for. If I find a need and can validate it, they will certainly meet it. I've not had any problems with that. Um, as far as our record keeping, I keep files on a monthly basis. Any information, any of my field sheets goes in there. Any of my um, permit tests go in there. And I bring it down to my Excel sheets. And, of course, it does all my formulas for me. And I print all that out. And I sitting there for monthly so at the end of the year when I do my DMR I can basically print out the whole year and take what's in my files and okay. you all contract your lab or y'all do it in house? Good morning my name is Devin Snyder I'm the wastewater manager for Suez we are the contract operator for City of Laurel, we do full service contracts, wastewater, water, and C and D maintenance. Uh, tell us a little bit about y'all 
uh, wastewater treatment facility. I've got two wastewater plants. Um, they're twin sisters, uh, oxidation ditch plants. We've got 50 lift stations, um, 200 miles of line, and we service about 23,000 residents. Do you you pull your all samples? We pull our samples. We do. We run an in-house lab. Um, we do send out to a contract lab just to um, you know, to have a second, just to judge it against ourselves. Um, and we also do you know an ERA study every year to certify our lab. And uh, like I said, we we do it all here. No violations on the wastewater side. These plants went online in, I believe, the uh, early to mid '80s. Um, they've had several, several upgrades um, since then. Just two years ago, well, let's back up. About five years ago, um, ten years ago, they did got the the brush aerators out of the system. Went with blowers and diffused air. Um, added a grid removal system. About two years ago, um, we refurbed the entire influent station, new bar screens, new pumps, new control systems. Um, just last year, we have redone all of the RAS system. Um, yeah, I mean, almost everything has been is new. Um, one thing I can say, our client, the City of Laurel, has been just outstanding as far as funding this project uh, and that's you know that's an advantage that we have that I know that a lot don't have um, when something breaks here uh, or you know a machine goes down we replace it immediately it doesn't stay down how long has Laurel been contracting Laurel has had their wastewater system contracted since day one They've never actually operated the wastewater plants. Then, uh, what do you like most about your job? You know, I, I don't even know where to start. Um, I work for a great company. I've got a, just an outstanding team of guys that work for me. Um, you know, and just just to do my part in you know creating a sustainable environment for the future. Um, and running these plants as efficiently as I can. And, you know, I like that, you know, in this industry you get tested. You know, it's not the same status quo day in, day out. It's, you, it's something different almost every day. And... Okay. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to recognize for receiving this nomination? And what does this nomination mean to you? Uh, I'd like to recognize Mr. Mike Moore, my project manager, for nominating me. But also, um, my team, because I wouldn't be successful without them. You know, they have, they're the ones that have been out there stomping the grounds, um, you know, getting this stuff done. And we have, we have turned these plants around in the past 18 months. Uh, it, it's just a complete 180. Make sure you got a team, but with your maintenance program and how y'all go about, you know, fixing things, getting things done, and and yet, you know, uh, how do you feel about the housekeeping and the ground maintenance as well? Uh, we do all of that in-house. Okay. Um, and you know, let's say a lift station pump goes to ground. Let's just use that as a common issue. Uh, one rule that I have is, number one, we, we pull it. We have a full scale system. We mentioned that. And that helps tremendously because we can see Every morning at 7 a.m. we come in and we pull up our SCADA. We have a little meeting. We look at every station. We look at the plants. What's wrong? You know, is there a pump that's not running? Is there a pump that's tripped out? And so we will immediately go right in and address it. Um, and one rule that we do have is let's say a pump is tripped or has gone to ground, needs to be pulled. We'll pull it and we also put a, a diesel bypass pump on it. Yeah, even though there's still one in the hole, just, you know, it's uh, a contingency plan. 
and you know we've just we've been able to work with our vendors in such a way that they they stock a lot of the parts for us and I typically have a two to three day turnaround on pump rebuilds so um, we, we do run a full CLMS system uh, we run the ER portal here it tracks you know all of our PMs all of our corrective work um, our mean time between failure is or approximate downtime is uh, is less than a week on any given piece of equipment. Okay. With that in mind, I take it that uh, you all, you and your staff, are constantly training and participating in uh, any type of training that may be given to to better help. Absolutely, um, we've been to, we've toured some of the local uh, pump rebuild places that we use, you know, just to give the guys an idea of how it works, get them some additional training. We've had contractors come and do uh, electrical panel class, you know, just, you know, the basics, showing them how to work it. Um, you know, also worth mentioning, when, when I got here, I was the only licensed operator uh, at this facility, and now we have seven. And so in 18 months, I've gotten every one of my guys certified except one. 